So there are a number of Macs set to be coming in October, so here's everything we know about every single one of them. With the first one being an update to the 14 and the 16 inch MacBook Pros. And the main upgrade that we're expecting to see here are some new chips. So the M2 Pro and the M2 Max chips, but other than that, everything else will pretty much stay the same. So the design will stay the same, the ports, the screen, the notch unfortunately will still be there. Uh, if we do get any other changes, I would guess that we would probably see a new midnight color to keep it in line with the MacBook Air and uh, to keep things fresh. But that's pretty much it. So when it comes to these new chips, what sort of upgrades should we expect to see from the M1 Pro and the M1 Max? Well, the M2 Pro is expected to be a 12 core chip uh, from the 10 core that we had in the M1 Pro. So that should be up to a 20% multi-core improvement. Um, and we're also expecting to see a bin model, which should be about 10 cores instead of the 8 core that we had before. That's a decent CPU bump. Now, on the GPU side of things, we're expecting to see a 19 core GPU up from the 16 core that we had now. So that's uh, up to an 18% improvement. And of course, we're also expecting to see a bin model, likely a 17 core uh, GPU instead of the 14 core that we had before. And then we're also expecting to see updated media engines, uh, which is essentially what the standard version of the M2 chip got. Uh, ProRes encoding was actually faster in that case, uh, so the M2 MacBook Air exported a 4K 5-minute clip, H.265 to ProRes, in 51 seconds compared to 1 minute and 14 seconds on the base 14-inch model, so that was 45% faster. Now, when it comes to the M2 Max chips, uh, this will come with two updated media engines for even faster ProRes encoding. The CPU is expected to remain the same at 12 cores, so that's again up to a 20% faster multi-core. Uh, however, this time we will not have any bin version. On the GPU side of things, we're expecting to see a 38-core GPU up from the 32-core that we have now, so that would give us up to an 18% faster improvement in graphics. Um, and we're also expecting to see a bin version here, which will likely be a 28 core model. So as you can tell, the performance improvements are pretty good, but the thing is, the M1 Pro and the M1 Max chips were already very, very good, and the M2 chips will consume more power, um, as uh, they're still based on a five nanometer process and they have more cores, so that requires more energy. The switch to three nanometers will only happen in 2023 with the M3. However, this is actually a newer five nanometer process, uh, TSMC's N5P instead of the N5 that we had before. So we are expecting to see some power efficiency improvements, uh, just, you know, they will be quite minor. So should you upgrade? Absolutely not if you have a 2021 MacBook Pro. I think you should now try to grab a baseline 14-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro, link in the description for a very good price. But I do think that these new models would be a good choice if you have any older MacBook Pro, as these models will be even better uh, than the 2021 ones. Okay, the second new Mac that we're expecting to see updated in October is the new Mac Mini. Uh, sadly, there's no redesign expected, according to Mark Gurman, and um, you know, that kind of makes sense. His reasoning was that the Mac Studio was already designed to look like the current Mac Mini, and it wouldn't make a lot of sense for Apple to redesign the Mac Mini again, uh, which would then make the Mac Studio look a bit outdated. Sadly, this means that John Frosser's leak, the one with the thinner body, the glass top, that's not happening. We modeled our concept based on that and gave it some super nice colors. They looked amazing. Uh, so yeah, those are unlikely to happen unless Apple decides to give the aluminum body some colors. But again, I don't think that's likely just because the main reason for not changing the design is for Apple wanting to keep the production cost low uh, and still uh, have it fit those server racks. Giving the current design different colors would simply increase the production cost. And I don't know, I just don't see Apple doing that with this design. Now, in terms of the performance, we are expecting to see two different configurations here. So the first configuration will come with an M2 chip. So that would give us 12% faster single performance compared to the M1 Mac Mini, 20% faster multi-core, 25% faster graphics, faster memory as well, uh, almost double the speed, and those ProRes encoders. Now, the second configuration, that would come with the M2 Pro chip, which compared to the M2, that would give us two extra CPU cores and nine extra GPU cores. There won't be any M2 Max version, and that's because uh, if you want an M2 Max chip or an M2 Ultra, 
uh, that's what the Mac Studio will be for. So I'm also expecting the Mac Studio to be getting an update with these new chips, as otherwise it would simply be quite strange for the Mac Studio to uh, use the old M1 Max and M1 Ultra chips. But really, um, the reason for some of you to maybe consider getting this Mac Mini is for that M2 Pro configuration. Like if you want to get that performance and the GPU performance of the M2 Pro chip, but you want to spend less than a base 14 inch MacBook Pro, then getting this new Mac Mini would be a pretty good idea. And the third new Mac that might be making an appearance in October is the new Mac Pro. And that's because aside from the four Thunderbolts model of the Mac Mini, uh, you know, the space gray one that still uses an Intel chip, the only other Mac that's on Intel is the Mac Pro. And Apple promised us a two year transition, uh, which would end at the end of 2022. Uh, so yeah, the Mac Pro would then be the last Mac to switch to Apple Silicon. Now, in terms of this new Mac Pro, we're expecting to see two different configurations, just like uh, with the Mac Mini. So the first configuration is said to be the one with the M2 Ultra chip. So this is said to have a 20 core CPU, a 64 core GPU, a 32 core neural engine, uh, and 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes of RAM. Now, this looks pretty much identical to the M1 Ultra. So I'm expecting to see some potential efficiency improvements thanks to that new N5P. Uh, manufacturing process and maybe some higher clock speeds as well on the CPU and the GPU. So we should still see some performance improvements over the M1 Ultra. And then we have the second configuration, which is the M2 Extreme. This will essentially be double the specs of the M2 Ultra. So that means 40 CPU cores, 128 GPU cores, a 64 core neural engine and between 128 and 256 gigabytes of RAM. Now on paper, all of this seems awesome, but the thing is when we had our uh, Mac Studios in our studio and we did the benchmarks, there wasn't that much of an upgrade coming from our M1 Max 16-inch Mac Pros uh, to the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. And if the M1 Ultra Mac Studio was such a niche product, I think the M2 Extreme Mac Pro will be an even nicher product. Of course, the performance will definitely be there, for those who do need it. So now I think a big question to answer is, will it actually have a new design? Well, I think this is quite likely. However, I do think that the design style will remain the same with those, uh, you know, that perforated case to match the design of the Pro Display XDR. That's unless Apple decides to also release a new Pro Display XDR with a different design as well. I also think that the whole Mac Pro case would be significantly smaller. However, this will depend on how Apple handles expandability and upgradability. So in terms of expandability, in terms of how many things you can connect to it, if you take a look at the Mac Studio, which is the most expandable Mac that Apple sells at the moment, it has one SD card slot, six Thunderbolt ports, uh, two USB-A ports, one 10 gig Ethernet, and one HDMI. Now, the Mac Pro can have way more than that, but only if you add expansion cards, as by default, it only has two USB-A ports, four Thunderbolt 3 ports, and two 10 gig Ethernet ports. Which brings us to the upgradability. How upgradable will this new Mac Pro be? Well, right now, if you wanna change the GPU inside your Mac Pro, you can. If you wanna add some expansion cards and add more ports, you can. If you wanna add that afterburner card and improve your uh, ProRes rendering speeds, you can. If you wanna change the CPU to some extent, you also can. If you wanna upgrade the RAM, you can. Now, in terms of this new Mac Pro, since uh, it will be based on Apple Silicon, the CPU will not be upgradable. Uh, the GPU will also not be upgradable as the GPU is integrated into Apple Silicon. Uh, the RAM, same story, not upgradable, integrated into the Apple Silicon. Um, there's no need for the afterburner card. So yeah, the encoders and decoders are also integrated. So does that mean that the new Mac Pro will not be upgradable at all? Well, I think that aside from maybe adding an expansion card for adding some extra ports, yeah, or maybe Apple would start selling some modules to add two M2 Extreme chips, but I do think that uh, the chance of Apple doing that is, is very, very small, as this will simply be one, an overkill for most people, and two, it will be so difficult to manufacture uh, these extra modules for, I don't know, like 100 people in the world that might need those. So in that case, isn't this simply just a Mac Studio? Well, yeah, kinda. It doesn't really make sense, in my opinion, for the Mac Pro to exist in an Apple Silicon world. And this is simply just, you know, a better Mac Studio, in my opinion. But let me know what do you guys think, and also check out our October products video on everything else to expect from Apple in October. I'm Daniel, this is Enough Tech, and I'll see you guys 
in the next one. Zenith Tech, signing out. Cheers.